I truly hate about me slides. No one cares. Right? Do you want to know where I went to school? New York School of Visual Arts. And that helps us how. Right? But this is my contact information. If you want to get in touch with me after today, please send me an email, get a hold of me on X, track me down. Um, scary DBA is my nickname. Um, I earned it. I used to be really scary. I'm not anymore. I'm a big teddy bear. But uh, please, 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 if you have questions after today, get in touch. This is my contact information. I'll put this up one more time. But other than that, I'm not talking about myself because no one cares. All right. Session goals. We're going to talk about AI. But I want to talk about AI for people like me. I'm kind of a dummy. I'm a little bit of an idiot. Um, I'm kind of scatterbrained. And this is about using AI as a tool. This is not for AI developers and, and really smart people. Well, I saw Luigi come in here a second ago. Really smart people like Luigi. Um, there he is. Um, no, 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 no. This is for people like me. And um, by the way, as we go through, every single image is an AI image. Um, and, and, and oh my God, some of them are horrific. Wait till you see. But some of them are kind of cool. But um, I love football. And yes, I'm saying it correctly, even though I'm American. I know what I'm saying. Hand egg is a horrible sport. Football is cool. But we're going to talk about PostgreSQL, and we're going to talk about AI, and we're mainly going to talk about AI as a tool for DBAs. All right? Let's keep going. What we're not going to talk about is discussion of implementation of AI extensions and all the really cool stuff that Luigi and other people are doing. Um, we're just not going to discuss that. There's other sessions. They'll be going over that stuff. If, you've, if you're into vector math, there's going to be other sessions for you. That's not the one today. Um, I'm not going to be talking about how to put your data into AI either. I'm going to talk about how to get your job done better, right? Because our jobs are not always that easy. So, because I'm just a DBA, right? I'm, I'm, it's, it's what I've done. It's what I've been for a very long time. I started out in development. I did a lot of development. I love development because development is just this constant positive feedback. Ooh, it works. Ooh, it works. Ooh, it works. But DBA, that was not the same. That was a lot of pain and agony. But um, I love the job. I really do. I love keeping things online. I, I like helping people out. And so that's what I like to do. And that's really the goal of the session. Everybody cool with that? Um, that is a DBA running with scissors. There was a picture taken in a, a PG conference in 2010 of a bunch of DBAs running around with scissors. I, I kid you not, you can look it up on the internet. It's out there. But I had the AI recreate it for me. So I, so I had a, an AI image of DBAs running with scissors. Okay, cool. So to get started, when we're talking about AI, there's three things that we're going to cover. And um, one, it's, it is all about that prompt. Um, it, it, the prompt is, is a big, big driver in what you're going to be doing with AI. It, it, you've got to focus on that. The next thing, though, is you do need to understand that these things, um, the, the name is artificial intelligence, but they are dumb as dirt. And they will get things wrong. And they will make things up. I, I say it lies to you, and, and I've, it's not lying if it's not with intent. I'm like, I kind of don't care. It's still a lie as far as I'm concerned. But whatever. It will make things up. It's called hallucination. We'll talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to talk about the tools that I used for putting together this presentation. By the way, all about that prompt. This is one of the scary ones that it just couldn't. I, I was saying it's all about that bass. Right, that the song all about that bass. It could not figure out what I was talking about, and I tried three different engines. They just could not get it. But this is the image, and I went with it. So prompts. The whole thing about prompts is you've got to be clear. You've got to be very, very, very clear. You've got to be more clear than you think you ought to be. You should really concentrate on very explicit language. Be very careful with it. You're going to see in my very first demo um, how you can mess that up. Make sure you're using appropriate terminology. Don't, don't, don't try to use shorthands. Um, stay away from you know, synonyms and all that kind of stuff. Use the words that you mean to use. Again, AIs, they're amazing tools. They really are. I love them. I use them all the time now. I've been digging into them as a tool. But they are still kind of stupid. 
And if you, if you are not yourself very clear in what you're doing, you're going to have problems. You need to make sure that you're very good on detail too. Tell it what you want. Otherwise, it will make stuff up. Now, maybe it'll make stuff up that's for, good for you and you're all, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I needed. Good to go. Thank you very much. Or maybe it's going to make things up you don't like. So you're going to have to take a look at that. Context really matters. You, real, you will have to say for PostgreSQL a lot if you're working in Postgres. If you're working in MySQL or Oracle, you can do the same kind of stuff I'm going to show today, but you're going to want to say for Oracle because otherwise it's going to cause problems. The last thing I will say about prompting is um, stop digging. When it starts getting weird, it starts hallucinating, you're getting answers you don't like, throw away that conversation and start over. Don't try to fix it. It will just get worse. For example, some of the images I tried to create today, I kept saying, you know, a blue Postgres elephant, right, over and over again. And it, for some reason, got stuck on Sonic the Hedgehog. And I, I kept trying to get it off of Sonic the Hedgehog. I, I, because I, I tried to clarify by saying Slonic, and one letter off. Well, two, yeah, but but close enough so that so that it, you know, with all the vector math and everything, it just would not. It lost its mind. So when you hit the hole. Stop digging. Everybody cool? All right. So my first demo is a bad demo. So I said, hey, write a script to back up my database. All right. So it, it says, okay, script. I'm going to create a script. And it, and it created a script. It's, it's going. It's cool. Backup. Yeah. Okay. And it's creating a script for a backup. My database. My. My SQL. Awesome. So I've got a script for backing up a MySQL database. Who here in the Postgres event is working on MySQL on a regular basis? I have a few hands are going up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. But still, is that what we want? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I wanted a backup for Postgres. So in this example, you can see, if you're not careful about what you give it, it's gonna try to do things. All right. So trust but verify. Oh, by the way, this image was I tried to get Ronald Reagan on a horse saying trust but verify. Whatever. Um, the thing is, is that what you're going to see is some of the engines, and, and there are different engines with different bases. Most of them are based on OpenAI, but not all of them. And what you're going to see is some of them have old data sets. And the old data sets are going to be wrong or weak or not applicable to the thing that you're working on. You're also gonna see some with bad training data. They've been scraping inappropriate or bad websites, or they've been putting things together. And you're gonna see hallucinations. The, these things are engineered to give you an answer, whether they have it or not. And when they don't have it, it hallucinates, it makes it up. It, because it has to give you an answer. We need to figure out a way to say, I don't know. Now I'm comfortable, I've been presenting professionally for over 13 years now, and, and, and non-professionally for over 30. God, I'm old. But um, I am very comfortable saying I don't know. AI is not yet there. Also, you've got to think about this, the stuff that you put out there, all the things I'm doing today, and we're going to talk about tools in a minute, all the things I do today are all public. I didn't do any private stuff. I didn't do any paid AI stuff. This is all freely available currently. We can talk about that a little bit later. But um, you do need to think about security. The things that you put out there, you might want to be careful. I, I, anybody heard of the GDPR? Anybody? Okay. All right. Cool. American audiences, you'd be shocked how few people have heard of it. And then I say, well, have, who's heard of the California Privacy Act? And they go, oh, um, yeah, I don't know what that is either. It's the GDPR for the United States. 
And they're like, no, it's only California. I'm like, okay, do you have any clients in California? Yeah. Guess what? Anyway, think about security. So talking about that, one of the prompts I said is, hey, I would like a detailed explanation of the native Postgres SQL function called delete me now. Who's heard of the native Postgres function called delete me now? I hope no one because I made it up. There isn't one. And then when it didn't give me the answer I want, I said, okay, no, no, I meant the delete me now function that was created by Ryan Booz, basically feeding it a little bit of reality with my fantasy to see what I could do. And we're gonna look at that in a second. Before we get there, I just wanna point out that, oh my God, what a horrible image. <laughs> it's actually appropriate for the delete me now, but I asked for a blue elephant. I did not ask for an elephant with hands or with writing all over it, or Sanskrit, whatever that is. It was pretty, this is, it. it, it AIs really do kind of lose their minds, but it was fun, so I kept it. So now if we watch this, um, this is using one of the tools, we'll get to in a second which tool this is. Um, I stopped using this tool for all of the rest of the demos and tests that I did because um, it was way too easy to trick. It took me three questions on almost every other API to get them uh, to hallucinate. Took two on this one. So you can see it, it starts explaining it. And, and, and I say, well, you, you know, and I'm typing right there in real time. I mean, this is all recording of me actually doing this stuff. I'm, nothing's fake. It's all real. And, and I, all mistakes, including my typos, I leave in so you guys can see them. But um, it starts explaining to me exactly what the delete me now function is. It was designed to facilitate the deletion of records from a database based on specific criteria. I mean, it sounds cool, right? Who wants the delete me now function? We didn't gotta have that. But there is no such thing. This is a full blown hallucination. It only took two questions to get to it. So this is one of those instances where these tools are going to help you. I, I guarantee these tools are going to help you. But you have to have knowledge as well. You cannot simply rely on these tools. Because if you're relying on them, they may lead you down a bad path. Everybody cool with that one? All right. So, oh, and by the way, this is my single favorite AI image that came out of it. it they, Dorothy looks like a badass but I wanted them to have tools like a mechanic. Now the tools they have are really kind of space agey weird stuff, but, but anyway, it, it did come out pretty good. So the tools you use, there's a lot are, that are out there. There's a whole bunch of them, but you are gonna have to think them through. Now, most of the stuff I used was basically chat. It's all basically chat GPT. It's all basically open AI under the covers, but there's different imp implementations of them. So like, like Copilot was really good. Gemini was really good. The um, OpenAI chat GPT was not the best. Perplexity of all the ones that I was testing, perplexity stood out head and shoulders. It, was, it, it gave me the best results most consistently. Now, am I selling perplexity? No. But, um, and, and by, by the way, again, the Google Gemini and, and Microsoft Copilot were very good. They were very good. The perplexity was a bit better. Um, U.com, I would not recommend to you. <laughs> it's, um, that's the one that only took me two questions for it to... And by, and by the way, my, uh, Copilot, Gemini, uh, perplexity all fought with me. I kept saying, no, 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 there really is a function called delete me now. And they're going, no, it, no, there isn't. We don't know what you're talking about. There's this other thing it could be. There's this other thing it could be. You're wrong which was cool to actually have this computer saying, no, 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 you're not right. But, but um, and then Brave was pretty good too. The Brave, the Brave AI was actually pretty good too. Um, but uh, uh, U.com, I, I would shy away from anybody who weren't working for U.com that's gonna hit, hit me later. I just wanna know before I get hit. Okay, cool, good. Oh no, one, okay. Please don't hit me hard. Okay. So, how do we put them to work? Well, I mean, these are the kinds of things that I did. You know, I basically said, um, and can I, use, can I use an AI to learn? And the simple answer is, yeah. 
um, can I use an AI to design a database? The frightening answer is yes. Pretty good database. Not great, not perfect. Not necessarily the way I would build it, but accurate. Can you use an AI to generate data? Oh, hell yes. This, that part's exciting. Can you use an AI to create test scripts? Yeah. And that part's very exciting too. Can AI write the code for you? Yes. Who thinks they've lost a job? You haven't. You haven't. These are tools to accelerate your job. These are tools to make your job easier. And it does all of this stuff. Can it do query optimization? Yes. Now, can I do query optimization better? Yes. Cool. And can it do code evaluation? Can, it, can you run, by the way, run one AI against the other AI? Yes. And that is magic. So that's one thing that to put in your back pocket right now. Test one AI with the other. Write that down. Okay, cool. All right, let's see it. Focus learning. How does Postgres enforce referential integrity? I'm trying to learn. Cool, Microsoft Copilot. That's going to give me an answer. I'm just going to let you read the answer in this case. I'm going to try to blather a little less. Hurry up. By the way, again, I didn't speed up anything. I, this is all real time. Um, no tricks, no surprises. Doing good on time, 20 minutes left. Yeah, I think we're doing okay. And it's literally telling me, how does it enforce referential integrity? And it's rolling through and it's, it's describing it. And it's describing it pretty well. I mean, if anyone has any major disagreements with it, let me know. But I think that's pretty accurate based on my knowledge. Everybody more or less agree? Roughly? Okay, nobody's screaming. Would you like to know more? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> so this runs on a loop, so you can see it over and over again. But um, but that's, you know, if you're trying to learn Postgres, who here is like, kind of like really kind of just digging in, like not, not experts already. A couple people willing to admit it. Cool, thank you for raising your hands very much. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, everything right with it, you're in the right place. Um, but this can help. If you have a question, you can go and ask it. Be clear and be specific on the question, but it will help you learn. Okay, cool. We've answered that question. Okay, database design. I am a radio, uh, ham radio, amateur radio operator, and I will say it. Um, we are just like vegans and CrossFitters. How do you know you're talking to an amateur radio operator? Oh, don't worry. They'll tell you within a minute or two. Same with vegans. Same with CrossFitters. And no, I'm not picking on vegans or CrossFitters because I'm just as bad as they are. And by the way, I used to do CrossFit too. C. I want it to give me a, a database with foreign keys, primary keys for amateur radios and radio operators where the relationship between the two is many to many. Okay, right? A very clear, very specific explanation. Um, this is perplexity. So, and it starts to explain everything. And then it gives me the proposed tables, which is really nice. And it tells me what those are. And then it gives me additional considerations. And so it's laid it all out. And I'm like, okay, cool. That looks good. I'm okay with that. Um, can I just have SQL, right? I would like to have SQL so I can create these things. Because, you know, just having it laid out for me, you know, explain this is what, you know, a table would look like. This is what a foreign key would look like. That's not enough. I want code so I can run it. Okay, so I give it, asked it for code. And it says, yeah, okay, sure. And generates the code. Now, does that code run? Well. Let's see. I'm going to run create radios. Yep, that worked just fine. OK, can we create operators? Yep, that worked just fine. How about can we create the radio to operators to marry the two tables together? Yep, that worked too. So it does code, and it does code accurately. Now, we could have arguments. Um, should it be first underscore, na uh, underscore name? I don't know. We can have that discussion whether or not that's a good column name. 
um, license class. I'm not sure if that's a good name necessarily. Uh, any ham or, or amateur radio operators? You uh, KC1, KCE. What do you got? Ah, oh, excellent. Anybody else? One, two, still one. Cool. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, so we can talk about whether or not the column names are good, whether or not the, the data types are what we would want. We can have those discussions. But these are functional tables and it works. This gives us a baseline to start from a database design standpoint. Everybody cool? Would this be helpful for people getting going on things? I think so. Not always perfect, but you know. All right, can we generate data? And by the way, why is he trying to do Morse code on a keyboard? I, anyway, nobody does that. But anyway, cool. Uh, or CW, for those who actually know what they're talking about. Um, can you generate full um, um, uh, full inserts based on actual radios? Okay, let's find out. So again, it's context using the tables we just created. So it now knows what the context is because I'm referencing back to the stuff I'd already done. It generated the data, told me what it's going to generate, and off it went. These are real radio brands, Kenwood, Yesu, Icom. Some of the top most expensive ones, by the way, the top three most expensive handheld radios are Kenwood, Yesu, and Icom. Or, well, I'm sorry, Kenwood, Icom, and Yesu in that order. But uh, it's generating all the code, it's generating all the insert statements, and it's ready to go. All right, how did it work? Let's see. So what we're going to get here is it's going to generate an error. In this case, it tried to add 5W for the power of the radio. So, because that's accurate, it's five watts is what it what it's supposed to be, but it's a number field, so it tried to put a letter in there and it caused an error. I fixed it and now it works, but again, trust but verify, right? We don't, we're not assuming everything it does is correct. We've got to make sure and validate it. So you wouldn't want to run this on a production system without testing. Nod, say, yes, you're right, Grant. Lie to me, because I, I know some of you are just going to go run it on prod. Don't. Grant said not to. Try that with your boss. They won't listen. But managers. Okay. So it does make mistakes. All right. This is where I get it. It gets more exciting. I love that it can generate real test data because it's going out to the internet and pulling in real information. Create a script for testing the database to determine if all of the other scripts function properly. Now, again, context, it knows all of the other scripts. All right, let's see what it does. So again, and by the way, these are some of these are different AIs that I'm, that I'm using this on. I did the same set of scripts against everything. Um, all the SQL that I run is all from perplexity, uh, but, but some, of the, some of this code is from different places, just to, just to show off that the different AIs were generating the same thing. Everybody cool with that? But um, it's putting in a whole bunch of things, verifying the primary keys, verifying the number of rows, testing updates, testing deletes, verifying final row counts, and then laying it all out and telling me what it's doing and putting comments in the code, developers. <laughs> Just saying. It put comments in the code. So I mean, okay, let's see, did it work? All right, so you can see what it's doing. Um, is, the, is call sign is null. Yep, okay, look at that. There's no values with a null call sign because there can't be. Um, checking the same thing in the, at other query. Um, are the radios not in radio ID? Nope, nope, all the radios are there. So it's validating the foreign key constraints and checking those out. Um, now it's going to test the constraints, the general constraints. Are the values um, coming in? Nope, that one failed like it should. It made failure tests as well as passing tests. Who here writes this much testing code? And, and half of you just raised your hands or lying. The other half of you probably write more. I, I get that. But, but this, is, this is exciting stuff. Because this is the crap that no one wants to do. Who, who loves writing tests? Okay, one, two, three. Cool, 
out of 100. Awesome. That's about what I would expect. All right, cool. That's fine. What about writing code? I'll let you read it. I did do specifics. I want to know, I want the radio ID. I want what the output is. I'm very specific about everything that I want, except that I'm using English. You'll notice I'm not telling it what my column names are. Is it going to figure it out? Perplexity again. Has figured it out very fast. It created the function and off it ran. And, and it even gave me it even gave me a way to test the function. Did it work? Create function. Come on, Grant, highlight it. There you go. I'm waiting on myself. That's that's a weird. By the way, this is an experiment for me doing this this way for for presentations. I'm used to doing everything live. I love live demos. I'm weird, but uh, I'm doing it all recorded. But you'll see it worked. It created a function, and that function returned data correctly. Your jobs are all in trouble. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Your jobs are not in trouble because you need a mark one eyeball on the stuff to make sure it's correct. And so that's not an issue, but it is going to help you speed things up. Everybody cool with that? All right, let's keep going. That function you just created, does that follow best practices? Okay. Well, I'd be happy to evaluate this function for you. Um, it's saying the overall structure is pretty good. The naming convention is good. The parameters are using the, the data types incorrectly. Um, best practice compliance. Um, it doesn't have any error handling and, and had a couple other makes. And so it made suggestions. Wait a minute. Did I ask it for suggestions? No. But the AI did it anyway. The AI made, you know, well, hey, hang on. You could do this and it would be a better code. Now, we could have arguments of whether or not there should be error handling in the select statement, right? Very cool. But, but come on. Is this going to help, especially the people who are still just learning Postgres, is this going to help you learn faster? Yeah. Is this also going to help you generate some code faster? Yes. Is this going to help you test your code faster? Yes. You're going to be able to validate more stuff quicker. All right, cool. Here's a really crap query that I wrote on purpose. It's a horrible query, freely admitted. Lots of select stars, as we like to do with joins and nested things and all kinds of heinous crap, including a nice left function on one of the columns. Can it tune this? All right, well, let's submit it. So you can see it's the exact same query you just saw. It's going to go in. This is not perplexity again. This is, uh, I think this one's Gemini. Now, I already don't like it because it introduces select distinct, which if we don't need a distinct operator, by the way, developers, we don't need a distinct operator. Don't put one in. But okay, cool. It's going. That's great. Check in time. Cool. 10 minutes. We're on time. We're doing good. It made some suggestions. Okay, well, let's check them out. What are the results? The query plan, this is what it was. And that's what it went to. That's not bad. 39.29. But here's the deal. I can do it better. What if I rewrote the query to actually make sense? Not be stupid. Um, okay, what happens then? Well, it goes from 29 to 4. All right. Well, what about if I put some indexes on? Because it didn't suggest any indexes. All right. Okay, well, now I got it down to that. So you can see that that your jobs are not in danger, right? I mean, that's the one thing. I would, if, you, if you come out with nothing else, your jobs are not in danger. You guys are going to be fine. But you've got a new tool in the toolbox. Now, some other stuff you could add to this. Please save all the scripts to a downloadable file. That works. I, I, didn't, I didn't record that one, but it works. How about um, generate a larger set of test data? 
You can just do that, if, and, and it would take the exact same syntax I already had because it knows the context, and then it would generate a larger set of test data. It would generate you know, 500 rows, 1,000, 10,000. I don't think there's 10,000 distinct radius. Well, maybe from Falfang, but, but uh, that's a joke that one person in the audience gets. But uh, I'm literally one person. But uh, can you create the test in Markdown language? Yes. It can actually change syntax. So if you say, hey, create these tests in SQL, cool, it'll create the tests in SQL. Create these tests in Markdown. It will make them in Markdown so that you could then make them part of a document. Who's excited now? Right, this is gonna make more and more stuff easier to get done. So, a few final thoughts. We've got a little less than 10 minutes. You've gotta focus on the prompts. That has to be your primary focus. You can't do anything if the prompts are bad. As, as we saw, give me a backup of my database. It went to my SQL because it had my in the word. Um, I wasn't specific enough. It didn't let me know what was going on. So, or sorry, I didn't let it know what was going on. Um, a magic power is to run the AI models against each other. I was having, I, I literally took this code that one AI generated and had it checked by the other AI. And I took the code from, from, that, from the first AI and checked it against the second and third and fourth. I was having them all check each other's code. And they found things they didn't like that I agreed with, which was really cool to see. Because yeah, you want it to be good, but having the AIs run against each other, it brings in different models, different learning sets, and therefore different results. And so you can get some pretty interesting information back out the using that mechanism. And did I mention trust but verify? Don't trust this implicitly. Verify and validate everything it shows you. You have to. Your brain is still better than this machine. For now. <laughs> Well, you know, and also it depends on how many drinks you have tonight. <laughs> if, you, if you're getting the, you know, the phone call at 3 a.m. after a football match, I don't guarantee that the AI may not be better than me. But, uh, but you know, regardless, cross but verify. You've got to validate everything. And then please, please, please learn to identify when, you know, you've got Sonic the Hedgehog and you need to stop digging and start over because you will find yourself down a hole occasionally. It, it's not hard. I, I did a, a couple of times as I was running through all of this using multiple AIs through the same set of scripts. Um, I did occasionally mess those scripts up and cause problems that then recovery from was, good word is maybe not impossible, but extremely difficult. Everybody cool with that one? All right, so hopefully we talked about some mechanisms that can help you guys leverage AI for yourselves. Not so much as a, you know, I've put in all my company's data, but more as I need tools to help me make my job easier. I need tools to help me make my job faster. I need tools to help me do things better. And that was my goal. And hopefully we hit that. Um, and you got some idea of what's going on, the day-to-day -day work that, that, that this can do and the way it works with Postgres, because it works extremely well with Postgres. As long as you tell it, that's what you're going for. Um, with that, and the AI it did had a horrible time drawing um, the Parthenon. This was the best Parthenon I got. I mean, I don't know where all the little Parthenons came from, but uh, that was the best Parthenon I got. And I tried like six times to get a Parthenon, and and it just did. It's like, my God, did take that picture and draw it, but it couldn't. All right, any questions? Right there. Thank you. Uh, what about uh, Claude AI? Uh, you didn't mention it. Claude. I'm using it a lot, so I'm just wondering. Great question. I had not, I was not that aware of Claude. Um, the, the question was, what about Claude AI? I was not that aware of Claude. Luigi actually was talking to me about it just yesterday, um, and I'm going to be testing it. I don't know. Right, right back here. Okay. 
run faster. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Thank you. I'm going to get hit by him. <laughs> Go ahead. My recent concern, one of many, uh, is a gap between business or business requirements and the uh, knowledge maintained by developers or so-called AI operators. This way of working, in my uh, understanding, will, will increase this gap. So they, the developers or AI operators will not care about what they are programming, actually. Sure. They, they are give the task to the AI using nat natural language. Right. And doesn't care about the what it does. Yeah. So, I mean, so that, that argument, that's an old argument, by the way. Because um, I, I, I used to get this a lot from um, DBA friends. Who's, who's heard this one? It's all ones and zeros. I don't care what's in the data. It doesn't matter to me because it's all ones and zeros. I manage it all the same way. Who's, who's heard that one? Surely I'm not alone. Okay, one, at least one. Cool. Yeah, that's a crap statement. Anyone who says that to you, you should fire immediately. Managers, that's, that's an indication. Those are the people to fire because at, at the business matters. Um, I, I'll, really quick, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, I'll never forget the day. I did not know this, but we had an annual renewal cycle that took place over a two-week period. And no one told us about it when we were building the database the year before. And then sure enough, we came around to that two-week renewal cycle and the servers are, you know, smoke's coming out, things are catching on fire, people are running around screaming because they renewed every single contract all at the same time over a two-week period. Funny enough, knowing what the business is doing actually matters for your databases and data servers and all that fun stuff. It really does matter. So yes, that, that's a concern. I wouldn't say necessarily it's an issue here because if you prompt correctly, you should it should actually be able to understand some of that. But you're still going to hit the same gaps. You're 100% you're, you're correct. But I, but I just don't think that's a new problem. Did you did you select any options on perplexity for your sources? Did I change or select any options on perplexity for my sources? No, I went. I intentionally went with everything bare bones. I didn't try to. I didn't try to redirect or or or, or get better results. And and the thing is, is you could, you could tune your results um, to 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 get them more efficient. But I wanted it to just be if you went in today, that you way there in the back. If you went in today. You would get the same kind of results that I did. That's that was the whole idea. Go ahead. Yeah, could you talk a little bit more about the strategy of playing the AIs off against each other uh, and how that improves quality? Because I noticed, for example, the tests that it wrote were things like it, you know, executes queries that validate that no data currently violates what are basically the laws of physics for right. Postgres, which <laughs> isn't that useful. So right. if you like pass those tests to another and get a critique on it or get a different version. Does it like really improve the test quality? Fantastic question, because the answer is I don't know. Um, I did not try running the <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's talk afterwards. I did not run the tests against each other, um, but I did run the procedures against each other and the procedure evaluation. And, and some of the procedures that were generated were much better out of some than others. And some of the procedures were, were fixed well by some, or better by some than others. Um, so the tests, no, I didn't, I didn't do the same thing. So, so I don't know, but if I was doing this in reality, would I? Absolutely. Because it, it, it really is, you get the results. That's great. Take those results over here and, and see what it says. And then take those results and go over to another one and see what it says. I mean, I, I would go from Copilot to Gemini to perplexity to brave, maybe, you know, I mean, but I would, I would test a few with the various code and, and you will see, you will see differences and you will see improvements. Great, great question. Thank you. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, again, I, I don't know. I didn't do it. Uh, uh, just, are we out of time? No, you have one more question. Okay, cool. Uh, quick confirmation. You, you kind of said this, but I just want to make sure I heard it correctly. Every account you use was essentially like a free account. Like you gave them an email, but it's not like paid copilot or paid no. GPT or anything like that? No, I did not use paid anything. I, I, I went free all the way on purpose. Um, would, the, would the paid accounts maybe do better? Yeah. And, and again, if I tune them, would they do better? Yes. But I went with, with bare bones free. Great question. Thank you.
All right, I think we're out of time. No, I think till 12. Oh, we've got till 12? I was told uh, it said 11.50. Oh, I ran a little fast. I'm sorry. Cool. Let's talk. I actually went a little quick through these things because I thought I was out of time. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for mentioning that you're a CrossFitter after 18 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, did you consider to ground the models with um, the Postgres documentation, like with a vector database? Would you repeat that, please? Um, did you consider to uh, ground the models with the Postgres documentation? No, no, I didn't. Um, the question was: Is would I would I did I try grounding the models with the Postgres documentation so that it knew what to reference? No, I did not do that. But again, did it on purpose because I wanted I don't I didn't want it to to bias it too much. I wanted to see what those things could do. Again, bare bones, um, you know, because you're smart enough to do that, um, and and I probably would have figured it out eventually. Um, but a lot of people out here are just going to, they're just going to go to the AI and see what it does. And I wanted, I wanted that experience. And so that's why I went for it on purpose that way. Yeah. Yeah. A great question. Hey, go ahead, man. We're, we got time to talk. I thought I was running out of time. I went fast on some of the slides. I apologize. I would have slowed down. Uh, hi. Uh, on the, on the, on the samples that you provided regarding where in the codes that were generated provided errors, uh, have you tried um, allowing the um, AI that you used to uh, feed, the, I mean, to feed all those errors and try to correct itself and which one was able to correct themselves faster or or did they experience hallucination afterwards? Oh, great question. So did I, did I feed some of the errors back into the AI to make sure I'm really in the habit of repeating? I know he had a microphone, but I can't help it. I've been doing presentations so long, you have to repeat everything. Apologies. Um, yes, I did that some for some of them to try to fix some of the errors. I wanted errors in here, so I left them alone. But yeah, I did feed it back in, in some cases to see if it could fix the errors. And okay, I kind of gave up on u.com after a while, but um, but all the other ones were able to fix most errors, but sometimes they would start to hallucinate. Um, and it really kind of depended on which AI and which error. There wasn't like a consistency in the behaviors. Also, by the way, I was I was really careful with the AIs to find ones that were running on different versions of open AI or that had modified the open AI um, for the proprietary stuff. So like Gemini is based on open AI, Copilot is based on open AI, but they are not pure open AI, right? They, they, they've made changes to the underlying code, some of the underlying data, some of the underlying learning. Um, so they are, so there are different result sets from these different engines, even though their base is the same. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, it was, it was a crapshoot almost. Um, a lot of them were pretty consistently good at fixing their errors, um, but they weren't all good all the time. Trust, but verify should be your watchwords always. Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, so it, it seems like uh, sometimes it can become very frustrating. You don't get to what uh, you would like to have. It's... Then you said, stop fixing it and start again. So what do you do that at that point? Do you, you rework your prompt? Uh, what the strategy there? Great question. So what, would you, what do you do when you stop digging? Clarify, clarify, clarify rewrite your prompt with more clarity, slightly different language, more guidance. No, no, I'm looking for, you know, amateur radio, not not FM radio. By the way, I got FM radio from one of them as we started, and I did have to clarify my prompt, which I then went back and started again with all the others, because if I'm going with a clearer prompt, I had to do it everywhere. Um, so, so yeah, it, it is very much um, all about, the, you know, again, all about the prompt. Um, so yeah, it, it's if if you if you really do find yourself down a hole, it might be that you made a mistake. You made a mistake as you went. And by the way, yes, I had typos. I had I did a couple of things where I wasn't paying attention. Copied and pasted half a sentence. Hit go and went. Oh no, and the results weren't good. And then it was recovery was hard. Um, and so I had to reset and start again. Interestingly enough, some of the AIs <laughs> asked the same question twice within a five minute window and get two different answers. Oh, cool. But, uh, but yeah, it, it is, it really is all about the prompt.
And, and so, yeah, I would reset, go back in. Um, that's really what it comes down to. Um, but again, this stuff is it, A, you saw what I typed, right? It's easy. I, I'm, I'm not smart. I was just very clear in the questions that I typed, and that's where I got the results that I got. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry, right there. Hi. Um, at the start, you talked uh, briefly about security, and then you didn't expand on it. I'm a bit worried about, you know, leaking secrets to open AI or open services. Do you have As experience you there? As you could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expand on it, but what I meant was it's like, it's like everything I did was was publicly available information, right? Uh, radios, radio types, radio brands, all of that's public information. You can go and look up Kenwood radios yourself. You don't need me. Um, the um, radio operators it generated are from a radio operators list. Um, I don't know about I don't know so much about some of the different countries in Europe, um, but in the U.S., um, as a radio operator, my name is publicly available. So you can go and look up KC1, KCE right now, and my name will come up. So again, it was public information. Would I take that same data out of my database and paste it into pick any of the tools, let alone you.com? No. Because that's what it's about is, is that you've got proprietary data. You've got personally identifying data inside of your systems. Could that go out to a public AI? Someone answer me. No, thank you. <laughs> no. Yes. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's my concern is, is that you do need to be cognizant of what it is that you are pasting into your web browser. Um, so like I was doing everything that's all very public, very open um, for educational purposes. Would I do the same thing with my own proprietary data? Absolutely not. And that's my concern on security. Does that, does that answer the question? Cool. Yeah, go ahead. Another question from me. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, you mentioned we should use that as a tool. Yeah. And I completely agree. Cool. As long as we have expectations, like we are uh, skilled programmers and we have ex expectations what is uh, the output of uh, AI work, it's, it's correct. Actually, it, it speed up our work. But how would like how would we avoid using AI by unskilled programmers pretending that there, there is complete work and how evaluate these results? All right, it's like a funny question, more wide uh, be, uh -huh. beyond Postgres. I'm going to answer it as best I can, and 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 no one's going to like the answer. The one thing that concerns me about AI. And, and I'm serious about this, but this is the only thing that really concerns me about AI is that we are probably eliminating a simple path from a beginner to intermediate. Beginner to intermediate, what do you have to do? You have to go out and hack and, and learn and bash and make, make mistakes and screw up. What if you could just type stuff in and it spits out a script and you can run that script and that script works? Okay, did you learn anything? Nope. Did that was that script good? Don't know. I have no skills. I have no knowledge. I can't determine whether or not that script was any good or not. My one concern with AI and this kind of use of the tool is that the junior to mid-level development is going to have a rough road to hoe. A hard road, um, difficult time. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to use Americanisms too much. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it's going to be difficult to, to go from that junior to mid-tier now because of AI. Mid to senior? Oh, hell no. This is an accelerator. This is great. You, you have enough knowledge. You understand what's good, what's bad, what you should see. Awesome. You know, this is going to make things run faster. You're going to get better at it. You're going to produce more code faster. Um, the testing person is gone, but but you're going to be able to generate tests and, and all of the stuff that you should be doing, you're going to be able to do it better and faster. So, yay, you're going to win. But junior to mid, oh, my God, I think it's going to hurt us. And that's opinion. 
that's opinion. That's not almost everything I've said today is is well not everything, but a lot of things I said today were were fact. Um, but um, some of it's opinion. This is very much opinion, and I guess we'll close with that. Um, this is my contact information again. If you have any questions, oh, you got time for one more? He said no more, so we're cutting off. Sorry, thank you. You can hit me up after. Um, hopefully, this was useful to people, and um, have a great PG Conf. Excellent.